Right, good morning, Grade 4s. Uh, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, this is carrying on with our series on writing good descriptions. Uh, we've already had a look at the rule of three, where we uh, use three good adjectives to describe something. We've had a look at how we can write expanded noun phrases. And today we're also going to be looking at another technique where we use figurative language. And the figurative language that we're looking at today is similes. And figurative language, what it tries to do is it tries to make your writing more interesting and imaginative so that when your reader reads your description, they can really imagine what this thing really looks like or sounds like or moves or smells um, and so on. So our learning objective, as it stands there in front of you, is we are learning what a simile is. Now, how are you going to know if you've met the learning objective today? Well, you're going to be able to do two things, and those are the two success criteria. So if you can do these two things successfully, you should then be able to know what a simile is. So the two success criteria is you can make up, you'll be able to make up your own similes and you'll be able to recognize similes in a text. Right. So at various points in this video, you will be able to uh, pause the video, have a go at the activity yourself and then carry on. So let's kick off then. So similes. Yeah are basically a simile compares two things and it uses the words as or like and that's really important so my first example there is a picture of the owl the teacher was as wise as an owl because uh, in most stories uh, owls are seen as sort of quite wise creatures something to do with their uh, their eyes they sort of come across as looking quite uh, clever so that's a good simile that they're saying that the teacher was as wise as an owl and again you can notice that it's a simile because you can see there that it's got the words as in it there Okay, so if we carry on to the next one, the boy was as fierce as a lion. So again, you need to ask yourself the question, well, how does, what does this, what does this simile tell me about the boy? Well, the fact that he was as fierce as a lion, lions, as we know, are sort of quite powerful, they're quite strong, they are very loud. So when I imagine <clears throat> what this boy is like, uh, he's obviously sort of quite, uh, as you say, quite cross, quite angry dangerous really possibly even uh, quite powerful quite a probably quite a big boy um, gets angry very quickly can be quite loud because I imagine lions roar it's very loud so this is probably not someone that I'd uh, sort of call my uh, call a friend all right but again it's a simile because it's got the words as in there all right so if we carry on next one there the old man was as slow as a tortoise. So if you know anything about tortoise, they are incredibly slow creatures. So you can imagine if I uh, read this in a, in a book saying this man was as slow as a, tortoise, as a tortoise, I would imagine this old man to be very old, really, really old, quite sort of hunched back, possibly uh, walking along with a walking stick and literally sort of walking a couple of centimeters at a time. Really incredibly slow all his movements are very slow, so he's obviously very old. So again, that tells me, rather than saying this man, it was an old man, I get the impression from this that this man was not just old, but very, very old, and he moved incredibly slowly. The same with this one over here. It was a quiet girl. How quiet was she? She was as quiet as a mouse. So again, I can imagine this... Uh, possibly a tiny girl uh, somewhere in the corner of the classroom maybe and just maybe uh, what's it uh, really really quiet I, I even imagine that when she speaks uh, her voice is quite high pitched almost like a squeak um, and it's very very um, it's not loud at all she's quite reserved she's quite um, uh, uh, quiet um, not only in the way she does things but the way she talks as well she's quite timid uh, she doesn't sort of stand out. Again, can you see how that simile paints all sorts of ideas in my head about how and what this girl is like, rather than just saying, oh, she was very quiet. Then we look at this one. I like this one in particular. A thief. What is a thief like? Well, if you think about the fact that they usually try and steal stuff, they've got to be quite clever um, in the way they go about their business so they don't because they don't want to get caught. Um, so this simile talks about how this thief is really smart. They use the word cunning. Cunning is a synonym for smart. 
So this thief was as cunning as a fox, because if you think about it, in lots of stories, in uh, in particular the one of uh, the gingerbread man, the fox is the one animal that manages to outsmart the gingerbread man right at the end by convincing him to hop onto his body and then eventually onto his nose as he crosses the river and eventually it leads to the fox eating the gingerbread man. So foxes uh, traditionally um, in stories and in real life are quite cunning creatures, quite smart creatures because they try and do all sorts of things to try and outsmart people. You can imagine like uh, Roald Dahl's fantastic Mr. Fox, if you read the story, the Mr. Fox, he does all these amazing um, schemes to try and get uh, into the various farmers' uh, yards, getting their, uh, stealing their chicken, stealing their cider, stealing their apples, stealing all their uh, produce. So again, it's this idea that um, uh, taking an animal and comparing it to an animal that is seen as quite smart and quite clever. So again, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh gosh, this thief, he's not a dumb thief. He's not a particularly um, uh, cumbersome thief. He's really smart. He's really switched on. He really comes up with sort of these fantastic ideas to try and get away with his crimes. If we look at another simile, this one over here, the boy was as cheeky as a monkey. Again, the picture there kind of says it a lot. We know chimpanzees, um, they, they are quite cheeky. They sort of uh, do all these funny facial expressions. Um, they are quite cheeky and playful with each other. It gives you an idea of how um, silly and, some, and playful this particular boy is. So again, can you see how that simile, because it's comparing it to a particular animal, in your mind you can immediately start to imagine the kind of character this boy is, rather than saying, oh, the boy was just cheeky or the boy was playful. Well, how playful was is he? Or how cheeky is he? He's as cheeky as a monkey. Immediately you can start imagining, well, oh, gosh, well, that means, you know, I can imagine him doing all these silly, crazy things uh, that shows how cheeky he is. All right. If we look at the next one, I walk to school as slow as a snail. Again, you know, um, one person slow might not be another person slow, but we can all agree that a, sn a snail is an incredibly slow creature. Goodness me. And, and immediately there, I can start imagining and to myself, well, you know, why is he as slow as a, sn as a snail? Is it because he doesn't enjoy school? Is it because he's uh, a small boy? Is it because uh, there's something else uh, that's stopping him from walking particularly fast? He's got a heavy bag. It immediately starts to conjure all kinds of images in my head rather than just saying he walked really slowly. Yeah. All right. Uh, the old cat was still as playful as a kitten. Again, uh, similar to the monkey one. Uh, a kitten we know is uh, sort of quite a playful creature. He gets caught up in something as simple as a uh, ball of yarn, uh, trying to sort of sit there and bat it. He's easily distracted. Um, yeah. Another one, the man was as strong as an ox. Again, lots of people have got different ideas of, of what strong means. Um, but the fact that this boy, or this man rather, was as strong as an ox, Immediately, I start to imagine, well, okay, an ox is a pretty big animal. He's very muscly. So this man has got to obviously have really powerful muscles. Obviously, he looks really, really strong. Um, he's capable of lifting things, uh, really heavy things, pulling really things. Um, he's maybe quite rough, yeah, is has probably got a sort of quite, quite a big neck, you know, like an ox. Um, immediately, it, can you see immediately the idea is that it starts allowing you to imagine um, a little bit more clearly in your mind what this man looks like. Not just the fact that he was strong, but what he actually looks like, his physical appearance. So these similes were describing things. So as big as a house, that's telling you the size of something, rather than just saying, oh, it was a big house, um, or it was a, uh, he was a big, uh, it was a big building, or it was a big this, or a big that. I'm telling you, how big was it? I'm, I'm telling you exactly how big it was. It was as big as a house. So immediately, whatever it is that you're describing the size of, you know, well, it's the size of a house. Because when we say big, that doesn't really tell us how big it is. You know? And again, below that now, sometimes we describe a doing word. So in this case, we're telling the reader, how does this person swim? Does he swim well? Does he swim poorly? We say he swims like a fish. Well, immediately that's telling us this person swims 
really, really well, swims really, really fast, um, is able to glide through the water at a fearsome pace. His body moves through the water, um, you know, flipping about. His arms uh, are almost like flippers in the way they push him through the water. It just gives you a much better uh, idea in your head of how this person is swimming rather than just saying he swims really well. Other ones, he looks like an ogre. So immediately if we know anything about ogres, they're quite grotesque, hideous creatures, uh, often sort of green, slimy, dirty. So immediately it's telling your reader that this character goes, looks like an ogre. You're telling him so much more than just the fact that he looks ugly. You're describing him in a much more imaginative way that allows you really to picture this character thinking, oh my gosh, he's dirty, he's filthy, he's obviously quite ugly, he's obviously quite big, strong, powerful, he's scary looking, he's terrifying, because these are all features of an ogre. So rather than just saying he looked scary, he looked ugly, the fact that you're telling your reader he looks like an ogre, can you see how it allows your reader to really imagine in their mind's eye how terrifying this person looked. She runs like the wind. Well, we know the wind moves incredibly quickly. So immediately you're telling your reader that this person runs ridiculously fast rather than just saying she ran quickly. You know, it doesn't really tell us, well, how quick is that? How quick is quick? Everybody's got different ideas of what quick is. But this tells you, oh, she runs like the wind. We all kind of know a really fast and powerful wind. Wow, that is, she is like incredibly, incredibly quick with her running. The boy jumped like a kangaroo. So immediately if you've seen kangaroos on uh, on television or on YouTube, you'll know they are incredibly fast and powerful jumpers. They've got these massive, powerful hind legs. So the fact that this boy jumped like a kangaroo tells you this boy didn't just jump sort of, you know, half a meter. He was able to jump absolute um, leaps and bounds and powerfully as well and really quickly um, and it just describes in much more vivid detail just how this boy could jump. So now we've got some examples over here all right and we'll go through a couple of them here see if you now can answer some of these. So she was as good as gold, water, beans or grass. So many you should be thinking of yourself what would be a really good comparison to describe this person as good as. And if you imagine to yourself, gold, it's quite shiny, it's quite bright. Um, it immediately gives you this idea of um, something that's very pure. You know? So if we have a look at gold, it takes it to the middle there, and we say she was as good as gold. She was she was not just good, she was, she was incredibly bright, she was um, shiny, she just stood out as, um, better than all the rest. That's how good she was. You know, gold, it shines, it stands out from the crowd. That's how good this person was. And if we look at the next one, Jack was as quick as, well, we've already had a look at um, some comparisons to as, uh, telling someone how quick something is. She was as fast as the wind. So here we've got some other things that we can compare how quick Jack was. So we've got a snail, a turtle, lightning, or a flash. Now, immediately we saw some examples there a snail and a turtle are not particularly quick animals, so we wouldn't really be comparing them um, in using them as a simile to compare and tell you how quick someone was. But if we said, if we looked at lightning, we know lightning is incredibly quick. You, you, you blink and you miss it. And as well as a flash, a flash of lightning, also incredibly quick. Um, so those are two really good images that you compare this person to when telling or when describing to your reader how quick it is. So in this case, we could use a flash or lightning and they would be equally as good as each other. So I'm going to choose he was as quick as lightning. And that immediately tells you, boy, you know, Jack's probably like a superhero in the, thing, in the sense that he's as quick that if you, in the blink of an eye, he's just gone. That's how quick he is. So immediately that shows you or describes you or allows you to imagine just how quick Jack is. All right. So if we look at next one. We already uh, had this one earlier. He was as quiet as, and I think that one is a pretty obvious one, just like the girl that we mentioned earlier. He's as quiet as a mouse. Yeah, really soft voice. Um, doesn't speak. Doesn't uh, stand out from the crowd. In the corner there, 
not doing much, trying to not be noticed. The snow was as cold as, and again, we've got ice, we've got sand, we've got dirt and coffee. And again, if you know anything about ice, you'll know it's incredibly cold. So that just shows you, it's telling you how cold was this snow. Rather than saying it was very cold, it was as cold as ice. Because immediately people know how cold ice is, so they can immediately imagine just how cold this snow was. He was as tall as, now again, you can sit there in your writing and say, oh, the boy was very tall. But tall is all relative. You know, if you are um, a very tall person, they, or, you know, six foot three or something like that, then anybody that's got to be taller than you uh, has got to be taller than six foot three. Whereas if you're me, very short, pretty much everybody's taller than me. But if I say to you, he was as tall as a giant, yeah, well, we all know giants are absolutely huge. So that tells you immediately and allows everybody when they read that to think, gosh, this person was clearly incredibly tall. All right. So we look at the next one. She was as light as. Now, again, um, you could be writing a funny story and saying um, this person was quite big. She was as light as an airplane. You could be being a bit... Um, uh, uh, figurative there, um, or you could be saying that this person was really, really tiny and she was literally as light as a feather. Because imagine we, yourself, we all know how light a feather is. If we drop it from uh, a high point, it tends to take an age to float down. So that's incredibly light. So that immediately in your imagination, you can see just how incredibly tiny this person was if she was as light as a feather. All right. Uh, now it's your turn. So there you've managed to come up with your own uh, similes. So that was one part of the success criteria. Now we're going to try and see if you can actually spot some similes in a text. So I'm going to give you a text now. It's a short paragraph. And I want you to try and see if you can spot the similes in the writing. There. So remember, with similes, you're looking for the words as or like. So those are your clues as to find out or to spot rather the similes in a text. So we're going to quickly go to our text, bring it up there quickly. Okay, so it says there, can you spot the similes? So what I'd like you to do now is we're going to read through the text and you can read it out yourself over there. And just with a pencil or and a piece of paper now, write down there as many similes as you can see in this text. So what I'll do is to help you out. I'll do the first one here for you. So we'll read the first sentence and see if there's a simile we can spot in that first sentence. So Jenny hopped out of her bed like a frightened kangaroo. So if you look there very quickly, have I, can I spot the word like or as in that first sentence? Ah, I can. So with my highlighter here, there's the word like. So how did she hop out of this bed? Like a frightened kangaroo. Yeah. And you can imagine earlier, we said that uh, we came up with that simile, uh, he jumped like a kangaroo. You can imagine a frightened can kangaroo must jump really, really high. So you can imagine how quick and how high and how fast Jenny jumped out of bed. All right. So what you can do now is you can pause this video and you can now, if you want to, um, write it out and then highlight the, the similes yourself or just go through each sentence and try and see, can you find a simile in every sentence there? All right. So go ahead, pause the video now, see how many similes you can spot. All right. So I'm assuming now that you have, in fact, actually done that. All right. Because as I say, the only way to actually uh, get better at this is to actually do the activity. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to my next slide. And what I've done there is I've now underlined uh, or highlighted, rather, should I say, all the similes in this text. So now it's your chance to see, did you manage to find all the similes in this text? So we're going to go on to the next one here. You ready? Here we go. So there are all our similes highlighted in different colors there. So the first one there that we did together was, she hopped out of bed like a frightened kangaroo. She slept like a log. Okay, you can imagine a log's pretty dead, dead to the world. She, it doesn't move. That just shows you how fast a sheep she was. Her hair, I like this simile here. 
It was really dirty. It was filthy. It was as dirty as a rat's nest. And if you've ever kept a rat as a pet, you'll know that when it comes to making their nest, they just put absolutely all kinds of garbage, pieces of newspaper, uh, smelly pieces of uh, twigs and grass and all kinds of disgusting things uh, for their for their nest. So you can imagine ugh, just how dirty this, uh, this Jenny's uh, hair was. And then when it comes to describing her teeth, how did they feel? They felt as slimy as an eel. So ugh, imagine, I can just imagine how grimy and disgustingly dirty these teeth of hers were. How did she have to be? She'd have to be as fast as lightning if she were to make it to school on time. So she would have to be incredibly quick if she was going to make it to school on time. So immediately she starts running around. She ran around like a chicken. And if you've ever seen chickens on video, if they're trying to sort of uh, run away from something, they run in all kinds of directions. So immediately in my head, I'm imagining her just running around in all kinds of directions in her room there, trying to find her clothes, comb her hair and brush her teeth. She's just going in all kinds of directions. She's an absolute mess at the moment, trying to get this done in, in time. But just as her mom calls her, she was done. Now she felt fresh and clean like brand new clothes. And you've ever taken your, your clothes out of the tumble dryer when they uh, dried from the washing and you, you lift them up to your up to your nose and you, you smell them. Yeah, they smell like that fabric uh, softener, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, washing um, powder. They smell incredibly clean and you just wanna mm, smell them more. And you can imagine now um, just how clean and how fresh she smells. All right, so Hopefully that gives you an idea of just how much better by using similes your writing can actually be, how much more descriptive they are, how much better they allow the writer to imagine what your character is doing, how they smell, how they're moving, how they feel. Um, and it just makes your writing so much more interesting than just saying they were fast, um, they were frightened, they were running, um, they smelled like this, they were as dirty as this, they were really fast. It just allows your reader to just imagine a lot more clearly just exactly what you're trying to describe to them. Right, so I hope you found this uh, video useful. Uh, we're going to carry on in the series of how we do descriptions. Uh, the idea now is that you can now try and see if you can come up with your own similes when describing your character. Good luck.